Hi there. Today we're going to talk about linear functions. Here's the deal. The world is very, very complicated. However, the miracle of mathematics is that a lot of this complicated phenomena can be modeled with very simple functions. Linear functions are those with a constant growth rate. They are among the most simple of all the functions and that's why we have to understand them really, really well. You know you can connect any two points with a line. In calculus class, given two points, you have to be able to come up with a formula for the linear function that goes through them very quickly. While you might already know the point-slope formula for a line, today we're going to teach you why it works so that you understand it and don't have to memorize it. As usual, we're going to explain with the aid of an example. Rapunzel is growing her hair out. After six months, it is 24 centimeters long, and after nine months, it is 32 centimeters long. Assume that hair grows at a constant rate. How long will her hair be after 15 months? While you might be tempted to try to solve this problem using your handy calculator, that's the wrong thing to do. The right thing to do is to get out your pen and paper and write stuff down. Then you have to think about it. I'm going to show you how to solve this problem without using any algebra whatsoever. Why would I do that? because then I'm going to generalize that solution and show you how it connects directly to the point-slope formula for a line. If we read the problem again, there are a few key points that we need to keep in mind. The first is perhaps that we assume that hair grows at a constant rate. That means that if we try to plot with months on the horizontal axis and hair length in centimeters on the vertical axis, then somehow this is going to be a line. The next key point to keep in mind is that after six months, the hair is 24 centimeters long. This means this is a point on our line. So here we go, six months, 24, that's right around there. And we also know that after nine months, the hair is 32 centimeters long. So, nine months, 32 is right up here. Since we know that the hair uh, grows at a constant rate, that's what we're assuming, we should draw a line connecting these two dots. There we go. So, at this point, we could even get an estimate as to what the answer should be. We think it should be, after 15 months, it looks like it should be right around 50 centimeters long. Let's see if we can uh, get some get some more uh, a more rigorous answer than that. So the first thing I want to do is I'm, I want to make a table. And the table I'm going to make. Well, let, let's see. Let's put these points on the table. So we have six and 24. So after six months, the hair length is 24 centimeters long. And after nine months, the hair length is 32. So nine and 32. And let's write down what we want too. We want to know how long the hair is after 15 months. So maybe the first thing we should do is figure out what the rate is that the hair is growing. So between six and nine months, uh, three months occur. And between 24 and 32 centimeters, well we have eight centimeters here. So the hair is growing at a rate of eight centimeters per every three months which is the same as eight over three centimeters per month. All right, so at this point, we can start to write down the answer. We can start to write down the answer. Think about this. So if we know hair is growing at a rate of eight over three centimeters per month, how many months did it grow for? Well, look, between nine and 15 months, six months happened six months there. Aha! So it's 8 over 3 times 6. And look, this is between 9 and 15. So here we go. There's six months here. And we basically
just figured out this distance here by doing 8 over 3 times 6. But we didn't start off being bald. We started off with a certain amount of hair. And at 9 months, you see the Rapunzel has 32 centimeters of hair. So we should add in 32. And this is the final answer. If you work this out, you're going to see that we have 48 centimeters of hair, which, which seems to correlate well with what we thought it should be. Why would I do this if I already know algebra? It's because it explains how the algebra works. So let's rehash what we just did. So the first thing we did was we found the rate at which the hair was growing. And we found out for every three months, the hair grew eight centimeters. So we got eight over three centimeters per month. This corresponds to the slope of the line. So really we found eight over three, and that was the slope. That was the first thing we did. The next thing we did was we figured out how long the hair was growing for. In our case, it was six months. So we had eight over three, and I'm gonna write it like this. 15 minus 9. This is where we got our 6 months because we're looking for 15 months. We know 9 months, so the duration, the growth between, along this time was 6 months. And so this would be slope times duration. And then finally, we didn't start at 0. We started with some height. We started actually at 32 centimeters and then 6 months happened and then we grew some more hair. So we have 8 over 3 times 15 minus 9, so parentheses around this too just to be safe, plus 32. And so this is slope times duration plus some amount. Now let's push this a little further. Let's really use some algebra here. So suppose we have our points x1, y1 and x2, y2. Again, first we found slope, and we should all know that slope is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. There's our slope. And then we did slope times duration, so that's going to be y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 times however much time has passed. So that's going to be x minus, say, x1. And then our final formula will be y is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1 times x minus x1 plus y1. Let's see a real example of this. So now suppose you want the line that goes through the points 1, 3, 7, 12. We should just be able to write it down. So it's going to be y is equal to, we have to write down the slope, so it's going to be 12 minus 3 all over 7 minus 1 times x minus, now it doesn't matter if I choose 1 or 7, I'll actually do both, x minus 1 plus 3, but another perfectly good answer, the same answer in fact, just looks a little different, is when you have the same slope and you do x minus 7 plus 12. I leave it to you to verify that these two uh, equations both plot the same line. While you might have known how to solve this problem before watching this video, this problem is essential. So we're doing it again. Let's go do some math. 